we have to talk about Rohit Sharma. Um, he looked so good today. It didn't matter whether he was facing uh, the pace of Hazelwood and Cummins and Stark, indeed Green as well, flying him away through backward point. The spin of Nathan Lyon, though, that was his undoing on 44. 44 out of 60 at the time of his dismissal. Batting so nicely with Chitesh with Pajara. Pajara doing what he does so well, easing into his innings. And Rohit Sharma finding the boundary with regularity, only to get out in a shot that was reminiscent of what we've seen actually from Matthew Wade a few times in the series. And just when we thought that Rohit was going to really lay a mark on this fourth test match, really lay a mark on the series after missing the first couple of matches, you can see there what Sunil Gavaska said on Channel 7 straight away. Totally unnecessary. A gifted wicket. That's certainly how it felt from our commentary position as well, Harsha. Sunil Gavaskar's wicket was among the most expensive wickets you could ever buy. And I think I can understand why he's saying what he did. Because that was a generation that said, you can't get me out. I pride myself on you not getting me out. But you mentioned Matthew Wade. Go back to Adelaide 2018 to Rohit Sharma to Nathan Lyon. Plays a similar shot. He was trying to hike it more over square leg then, but he was batting with Pujara. And I think India was just starting to recover from a terrible start and he was caught at mid-wicket again. But today's innings, you know, when he first, when he was first picked to come to Australia, I mean, when they finally picked to come to Australia, all of us are thinking he's never opened in a test match overseas. Will he be able to succeed as a test match opener overseas? And if you said, which is the ground that will test him the most? Maybe Brisbane. Uh, with the caveat that unlike other Indian batsmen, certainly batsmen of the past, Rohit Sharma likes bounce. But still, there'll be a bit of seam movement. Oh, those 44 runs, he actually invoked a sense of calm. With Rohit Sharma, you're always edge of the seat. There's always a sense of calm. He's batting beautifully. And then, yeah. So so that is why I was shaking my head and saying, no. And, and I'm, I think I'm the, still getting over. Yeah, and I think the fact that it was in such close proximity to what ended up being the last interval of the day. If he's there at T on 51 and he comes back tomorrow morning and India are 72 for one instead of 62 for two, I think we're having a very different conversation. I think we're talking about how Rohit Sharma can do something special. Instead, Rahane Pajara for the third time in the series, they're the not-out men overnight together. And make no mistake, they could bat all day. We know those two could do anything together, but it just feels like a different dynamic when Rohit Sharma, who can score so prolifically, so many runs against Australia in white ball cricket as well. It's a psychological thing. When he's in the middle, Australian bowlers know they've got a fight. Now, they'll have a fight against Rahane and Pajara, but a different kind of contest on account of his dismissal. I'm going to say this in favour of Roy Chum. Very few players in the modern game, even in test cricket, hit a six as cleanly as Rohit Sharma does, almost as easily as Rohit Sharma does. And so he's probably thinking, you know, I can, I can hit a six here. I know there's a field on the boundary. I'll probably go straighter. The odd time, I might go to his right. I know there's a field on the boundary, but I think I can beat him. That's the modern mindset, isn't it? So maybe he thought, look, I've, I've done it before. So that's the only thing I will say in his defence. I think his problem was the ball turned a little bit. And you never say this about Rohit Sharma, but it did not look very pretty, the shot. Rohit Sharma, when he normally plays, the shots are aesthetically so pleasing. This was one shot that wasn't. I mean, let's 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 face it. I mean, he, he's probably sitting there thinking, why not did I do it? Feeling worse than we are. But there was one other thing after he played the shot that filled me with fear, which is the little limp as soon as he played the shot. And then he completed the single almost hobbling. And even when he reached the non-striker's end, he, there was still a little limp there. And in a series where a sneeze is enough to cause trepidation in the among <laughs> Indian supporters, that, oh, you're starting to think, <laughs> one more, hope not. One, one more thing on Rohit Sharma. He did speak after play, and the way he tried to frame it up in his defence is that that is the style of cricket that he plays. And look, I, I have a certain regard for that perspective. We, we want to see Rohit Sharma score, um, but it's balancing that, isn't it? Uh, so how did you interpret the way that he talked after play today? It's easy for him to say that, and he's a senior player, so... I guess he knows he knows what he's saying, but he's probably saying, "Look, if I'd hit, if if I'd connected and that had gone for a six, you wouldn't even be talking about this again." But in in a test match where you're playing more on spirit, on on spirit, you're a match for Australia, but in terms of pure ability, you're not a match for the opposition. And you've and the players who are in have got to do as much as they can to shield the people who are playing on spirit and and in all honesty, slightly lesser ability. You've got, I, th I think you've got to do a little bit more. But it's a, it's a far easier game sitting in a hotel room than it is when you're facing the room. So that's all I'll say in its favour.